every wastewater design requires a flow source because this is going to tell the software which direction the wastewater is running. So choose it here from the toolbar and you just need to locate that wherever your building is connecting to. To draw pipes, choose a reticulation pipe from the toolbar here. And then you can just click around on the design, like it's a polyline, to draw the layout. So as you hover over someone, you can see that these lines come up to show that you're about to connect. So as I click here, that's connected. And every time I click now, it's going to draw that new piece of pipe. The height is always default to below the floor, and the length is measured as you draw. Um, and if you want to line up with something, let's say you want to connect to the shower, you can hover over it first. And then as you intersect it, you'll see these lines and you can click. Um, and if you want to just connect to it at this height, be a minus one, you can do. Or alternatively, you click here. And because the shower has a height above the floor as well, you can then choose to connect from that. And as it comes down here, you can see the, um, the change in height represented. If you didn't like the way the pipes default, you can click on one, or if you want to hold control, you can then go around selecting multiple. So you can, we can see as we click around, that number here is increasing. You can then change this number, so if you wanted it to be at a different height, you can do that. And then it's completely up to you if you want to draw it at 90 degree angles. You can just go through and connect all your pipes like this, or you can also, yeah, uh, do it at 45s. Really depends uh, what you want to do uh, with your projects and how accurate you want to be. To add a stack to your wastewater design, choose the stack from the toolbar here, and then you can locate that on top of a pipe that you've already drawn, or alternatively, just locate it where you want it to be. Then you can click on it and look into the properties. So it will default to the bottom of the building all the way to the top of the building. If you didn't want that to be the case, for example, if you didn't want it to go to level three here in the properties, you could say on level two, you don't want it to go more than three feet above that floor. So because it's above level two floor, we can see it here. And then if we go to level three, it's not shown. So you can customize that both with the top and the bottom. And then when you're ready, choose the pipe here and start to draw. To add a vent to your design, you can choose vent from the toolbar here. Just make sure it's not reticulation pipe. So choose the vent, and then you can connect it anywhere you'd like to, to your wastewater design, and start drawing that layout. If you just wanted like an air admittance valve, what you can do there is just leave it as the cap end and potentially just add an L like AAB. Alternatively, if you didn't want that, you can choose the vertical vent. Now, as you drop that on the pipe that you've drawn, it will snap to the bottom vent that is connected to it and you can then specify in the properties how high you'd like that vent to go. There are a range of valves and accessories that you can add to your wastewater design. They don't contribute to the calculations but users like to add them because it makes the design look more realistic. So if you want to add them you can literally just choose them from the toolbar and drop them on the design wherever you'd like them to be. Alternatively, you can place that first by clicking, choose the reticulation pipe, and then you can come through and uh, draw it up. So whether you want to add them first or add them once you've drawn your layout, completely up to you. Nodes are a great way for you to get your results in a fast and efficient manner. The way they work is instead of adding individual fixtures and connecting them all together, you can choose the node, and let's just say, for example, there is a shower in this area that will snap to the nearest pipes, and then maybe there's a basin over in this corner. As you can see, it's really fast to add these, and then for the calculations, it will look up the fixed units or the loading units to do the pipe sizing calculations. Alternatively, if you have common groups of fixtures like this bathroom, in the node menu, because that doesn't exist, you can create your own by following this process. Um, give it a name, give it a range of pressures that you want to aim for. If you fall outside of it, it will give you uh, warnings. Um, and then, yeah, we can put in the laboratory sinks. 
um, three WCs and one shower. Scroll down, click create. And as we come back to the project, scroll down, that will now appear. And once again, we can stand by in that area. And we can see we've got the fixed units uh, for what's connected. Fixtures are a great way to get detailed and accurate results. But if you are doing a concept design where you don't need to go very, very detailed, we'd recommend using the nodes, which are covered in a different video. But if you do want to add the fixtures, we've got a range in this drop down menu here. If there's something on the list uh, that you can't see and you'd like to add in the nodes here, you can create this fixture node and that will snap to the nearest pipe. So, for example, if we had a future fit out over here, or it was just a fixture that doesn't exist, give it a name, enter in the fixed units or loading units, and yeah, it will contribute to your design calculations. But for fixtures that we do have, choose it from the drop down menu. You can rotate that with the arrows on your keyboard, and then stamp it on top where the architect has shown it. If you hover over a fixture, and it will bring up this black line. So to get them all neatly aligned, you can do that. I'll just do two because there's two ways to connect them up. One way is to manually draw the pipe. So you can hover over it, click and connect to the nearest pipe. As that cap disappears, you know you've connected to it. Another way is to let the software do the connection. So you can click on the fixture, hold control, click on the pipe you want to connect to, or alternatively, right click, keep hold of it, and drag a box over the two things you want to connect, and then click Auto Connect. And I'll run that pipe in the most efficient route it thinks possible. Connecting two fixtures, such as basins or lavatory sinks, where they have a warm water connection, is a little bit more difficult. So we look at two examples here. Because it requires warm water, it doesn't let you connect hot straight to it. As we can see here, as we hover over this, that cap doesn't disappear. If we want to change that in the fixtures, properties, allow the systems to connect for warm water, it'll turn that cap from orange to gray. And now as we try and connect hot water, hover over it once again, you can see that cap disappears. And now we'll connect the cold water up, just like that. Alternatively, if you do want to keep it as warm, we've got TMVs or tempering valves, so they snap to the nearest pipes. And if you want to, you can start connecting this up. However, once again, you can do auto connect. The pipes aren't always straight, especially in tight situations, and it can be difficult to drag things. So if you did want to just if you want to be really accurate, just draw the pipes. If you're happy with that, because your calculations are uh, as accurate as they need to be, then yeah, that's a great option. To add a pit or a tank to your wastewater design, you can choose it from the toolbar here and click wherever you'd like to locate that. If you'd like to align it with a pipe you already drawn, hover over the end of it, and then as you move away, it will snap to that line. Then in the properties of the pit, you can change the name. So you could call it, say, like a dilution pit, Grease arrestor, um, sewer manhole, for example. From there, you can rotate it. You can flip which direction you want the flow to go. You can change visually how it looks. So, if you want it to be more of a square, you could do 20 by 20. And then from there, just choose what inlet you'd like. So, the inlet's on this side of the triangle and the outlet is on the other one. So, at the moment, both sets of sewer drainage. But if you, for example, had like trade waste or grease waste coming into it, You'd want to select that for the inlet, and then on the outlet it would change. Um, but for now, I'll leave this some drainage. And then from here, just select the flow system you'd like, and then connect up. Once that cap disappears, it's connected, and then you can carry on drawing as well.